God is telling us that when we are having sex outside of um, a marital covenant, we are sinning against our body. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Yitande and let's get into this video. So we are talking about it. We're talking about this again today. I say again, but honestly, I don't really remember talking about this subject so like frankly <laughs> on my channel yet. So, but we're going to talk about it today. Let's talk about sex before marriage. So, I'm not here to judge anyone. I'm not here to um, enforce what I believe onto anybody, but I, as it's my platform, I'm gonna share what I believe and know to be true. And that's it. So uh, if you agree, great. And if you don't, it's no problem. We can't always agree. But the reality is, I'm gonna speak the truth on here, right? <laughs> Let's talk about sex, baby. Let's talk about you and me. Let's talk about all the good things, all the bad things, that baby. Let's talk about sex. Anyway, if you don't know that song, that means you're either too young or I'm old. You're too young, no problem. <laughs> so the concept of sex, of not having sex before marriage or being abstinent, before marriage has been deemed as archaic, as has been deemed as something that, you know, is very traditional. We don't, you know, we don't need to go by these laws. Some people even believe it to be quite patriarchal, especially because it's usually enforced more upon women, which I know to be true and experience myself, right? And also because of that, a lot of, um, people do kind of hit back and say it's my body and I can do what I want you can't tell me to do what to do with my body and again I'm not here to tell you what to do with your body so don't worry about it you can also say to me that God looks at the heart he's not looking at whether we're having sex or not it's not a big deal if I feel like it he knows what it is you know some people might even say that you know when Jesus was on earth, he felt every temptation. So he must have felt that temptation. He understands. So he gets it. So if I gave in, because I'm, not, I'm not Jesus. So if I gave in, what's the big deal? Like, it's not like, you know, why would I go to hell for something that is not a big deal? And also some, again, may say that times are harder now. Back in the day, you know, women usually, and men usually lived with their family and they um they lived with their family up until they were married and even bef in between that you never really dated it was more so an agreement between families that my son will marry your daughter and vice versa and therefore the husband and wife sometimes would even meet you know on the wedding day itself and that's when they could they could consummate the marriage and they were already married so therefore sex was they could, you know they could have sex no problem um some people may say that, like, you know, things are things are different now. We don't have that. How are you going to know if someone is, if you're sexually compatible with someone, if you've not slept with them? Like, you need to know because, you know, these things, it's a must. It, you know, how can I not know if some, you know, imagine marrying someone. I remember reading actually an article a couple of years back of people that had ex share, were sharing their experiences of, uh, of the, they were virgins before they got married and you know and some of them were like yeah you know it was we had to learn each other and blah blah, blah. And a couple of them were like it was awful the sex was so bad that you know they got divorced basically and therefore it was like yeah you know 
you know, so I felt like the article was conclusive. It was basically saying that, yeah, you know, it was neither, it was neither here nor there, but it did feel like it was pushing more to, you know, save yourself for marriage at your own, at your own risk. Because one of the women, she had saved herself and she had been bitterly disappointed when she eventually got mar married and they were having sex and she said it was just so terrible and it just made her disillusioned about sex but now she's in a relationship she's not married anymore to the person that she was married to she's in a relationship she has sex freely and this is not her first relationship and she just feels more free and therefore this you know she has no regrets this is this is better for her life you know she's dropped that belief she just feels like it's not for everybody blah 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 i'm not here to tell you that i'm here to tell you that that's a lie as well please this year we're going to look after ourselves like intentionally we're going to look after our mind our body and our souls right sex involves all three you know it starts in the mind where the bible says that you know adultery starts in the mind of a person so usually even just by looking some at somebody <clears throat> they've already committed adultery again adultery is used as um something that is done that shouldn't be done it's not used as a sense because adultery now is used for married people that commit adultery that they they were caught in the act of adultery like sleeping out sleeping with somebody outside of their marriage but adultery is also because god and us we are one when you become a christian um we believe we become one with the father the son and the holy spirit and therefore if we commit a sin and um that is that is that's painful to our father and especially sexual sin would be deemed as an act of adultery to the Holy Spirit because it's an act not just to somebody else but it's to your own body in which the Spirit of God dwells. So a lot of people like to use and they have coined it in popular culture, my body is a temple, my body is a temple. But the true term comes from 1 Corinthians 6.18. I'm going to share that. Um, sorry, I'm going to share from 1 Corinthians 6.18. The actual body is a temple is in 1 Corinthians 6 19. So it says, flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a person commits are outside the body, but whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. Do you not do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. Amen to the word of God. So God is telling us that when we are having sex outside of um, a marital covenant, we are sinning against our body. His spirit that dwells in us as Christians is grieved when we have sex outside of marriage. It's grieved. And, you know, when, when the Bible talks about the spirit of God being grieved, it's such a big word, grieved, grief like as if somebody has died as if something has died that's how serious it is to god when we have sex outside of marriage and i'm not you know there are people that are doing it and there are people that are doing it openly like it's it's not a big deal people that live with their boyfriends or live with their fiancés it's not a big deal to them. It's not a big deal to the world. It's just, it is what it is. Time, again, like I said, some people might say, times have moved on. Yet know you're being so judgmental. Maybe you say, oh, you're being so like traditional or archaic. And maybe it's because you're married that you're feeling like you can say this. No, I'm saying this because even when I was single, okay, I didn't have sex, right? Um, and I, but I wasn't a pure virgin as people might say because people believe that as a virgin once you have not you know once you've not had intercourse therefore you're a virgin you're you're pure and holy no that's not what a virgin is a virgin is someone that yes has not had intercourse but it's also someone that hasn't done anything sexually has never done anything sexually and that could include masturbation that could include um I don't know, oral sex or the different types of sex that don't require um, penetration. That is also immoral. That is also sexual immorality. That's also just as bad as 
having penetrative sex. So therefore, if we are fooling ourselves and thinking that I just, you know, you've just been touched up, whatever, whatever, and it's not a big deal, my brother, my sister, we are lying to ourselves. And I just want us to be honest with ourselves. If we are in that state where you're just used to having sex outside of marriage, God can help you. Sexual immorality is the only sin that God tells us to flee from. That is the only one, the only one, because he knows how hard it is. He knows how hard it is to be with somebody. You're, you know, you're, you're so attracted to them. You have great chemistry and you're having sex and then you decide to stop. <laughs> just like that, just like that, it's not possible. It's not possible. And I will say that, and I will tell you that with my chest, I know that it's not possible that you will be with somebody that you quote unquote love, you, you really like them or you lust them, you know, they're good. You just want them, you constantly want them. And then you're telling me that, you know, this is wrong, I cannot do this. When it's giving me so much pleasure, no, it's not possible. My, but it is, it is. With the help of God, all things, all things are possible with Christ. All things. So if you desire to free yourself from this kind of life, if you desire to reconcile back to God, because let me tell you another thing that is quite deep, right? Sexual, sexual immorality, it separates us from God. Some of you might say, yeah, but I know people that, I know they're clearly having sex outside of marriage and they're still going to church. They're still like, they're still cool with God, they're still blessed, they're still thriving. Let me tell you, yeah, when it comes to certain things about people's lives, um, how they feel when they're on their own, you will never know. How their relationship with God is when they're on their own, you will never know. You will never know. And because somebody's life looks great, doesn't mean on the inside they feel great. It doesn't mean on the inside that things are perfect. Even in general, like life may seem sweet to certain people and they may come across as if their life is great, but deep down, we don't know what they're dealing with. And someone that, but I can tell you categorically, having sex outside of marriage is detrimental to your mental health, to your physical health. It's, it's, it's risky for your physical health. And it's just, and, it's, and it destroys your spiritual health. It destroys it because you're doing something that's separating you, that, that brings you further and further and further away from God. You know, it's so hard for me to speak about this because I'm, I'm wary of people feeling like I'm judging them, right? And there's a lot of things that I haven't spoken about on my channel because I've always worried about how people will perceive it or how people would feel if like they were on the other side of it. But honestly, my mandate is, is greater than me. I'm not here to make anyone feel good about something that's wrong that they're doing and they know it's wrong. I'm here to, I'm here to remind us that God is always the answer. I'm here to reconcile us back to God. That's it. I'm here to get you in a position where you want to be closer to God that's it that's it and I want it to be a thing where it doesn't feel like um work it doesn't feel like um yeah I want it to be a, a, a thing that it doesn't feel like work I want it to be a thing where it just feels like relief because honestly many of you that may even come at me <laughs> and may even say, you know, may, may, may not agree with this video. If you look down, down deep inside of you, if you spend, if you go to God in prayer, speak with him, let him be the one to, to, to tell you whether it's wrong or right. Don't even listen to me. Go to God and ask him and he will let you know. I remember there was a video that I had posted and I had mentioned on, this was on Instagram and I had mentioned, oh, wives this must you know do your husbands do this and blah, blah blah and someone came she came at me hard with some vitriol she went this was ready to tussle she was like 
you know, um, something, something, something like, you know, it's not just people that are married, people in relationships, da da da. Like, it just was like, she was really projecting and I was like, me, I didn't even block her. I didn't block her, I didn't even respond because I, my own was like, what? <laughs> like, what did I say? Did I, did I say, did I mention anything about those that are not married? I didn't mention, I said husbands, wives, what's the problem? So, but I felt, you know, obviously I knew she was projecting and it was, it's best between her and God. Like, if you feel, if you feel angered by this video, if you feel frustrated by this video, or if maybe you have not even, and, and maybe you've not even watched to this point, that's okay. The, those that need to hear this, will hear this and I pray that you will receive it in love and you will trust God because the truth is sex can be learnt it can be learnt you ain't got to rush you don't have to rush it's not that deep you have and the thing is when you get married you'll have it eh you'll go tired you said you'll be run, you'll be running like ah I have a dick oh this one that one Sex is great. I love having sex with my husband. It's amazing. It's it's wonderful. But I love it even more because it's in that it makes God happy. That it's in the confines of marriage. That it's not with a boyfriend. That it's not with a fiance. That it's with my husband. And it makes my life so much easier not to have to carry the guilt of sexual sin. Because that guilt. Trust me, I know it. Not that I was, like I said, I was not pure. I was not pure. But I, and I felt guilty. I felt, I felt down and I felt I was not reaching my capacity, my full, and I wasn't reaching, I felt like I wasn't reaching my full potential in various areas of my life because I knew that something was holding me back and living in sin, I know people would be like, oh, I'm living in sin, I love it. Because, you know, being all rebels and stuff. But living in sin, I feel like there's a threshold. There's just this, there's just this threshold. You may be doing all right, but you could really be doing amazing. You could really be doing amazing without having this thing capping your potential. So the things that, you know, the things that we all know that are the risks of having um, sex outside of marriage, STIs, sexually transmitted infections, which some people might say as well that it can happen in marriage. That is um, a discussion and a prayer point and a therapy point for that marriage if that's happening, because it shouldn't be. Especially if the person is, you know, if it's, it wasn't something that they had before they were married. Why is there STIs floating around in the, in, a, in the confines of marriage? It shouldn't be happening. So that is something separate. But it's something that you expose yourself to when you're not married. Because the person has no real commitment to you. You can say that you're engaged. So what? The engagement can be broken. You can say that marriage is to get, that you know, divorces happen, but divorces take ages. They take ages, unless maybe it's an annulment, you know, I don't know how long they take, but from what I know, divorces can take quite a while. And with, between the time that somebody has started the process of a divorce and between the end, they might even just, they could even decide that they no, one, they no longer want a divorce. So the thing about engage and sing and not, and having boyfriend and girlfriend, there is no legal commitment. There's no legal commitment. There is no real spiritual commitment. There's no spiritual commitment unless you're ready and that. And, once, and, and another problem is that when you now sleep with this guy or this girl and they are crazy, you now find out that this person, they're crazy. They, they're crazy well, well. And you're like, man, I got to get rid of this crazy person it's so hard to let them go it's so hard to shrug them off because the thing is you know some people might not believe in soul ties i'm not going to go into that today but the reality is the deposit of that person is is inside of you somewhere 
they're under your skin, they're in you. And that is how, that's how deep sex is. The person, you, you're just intertwined. You're intertwined. And then you're trying to, you're trying to like fuse apart something that has become intertwined. That's really nuts. And that's really messy. And then especially if the person is toxic and you, and you, you find yourself struggling to let them go because you're already, you're already intertwined. You know, the thing about, thing, the thing about God is that he's, he, he knows the end from the beginning. He knows why he said that don't do this because he knows how much pain it causes, how much heartbreak it causes. Oftentimes people that get heartbroken by um, when, they've, when, when they've been in relationships is because they've had sex. I'm not saying that um, you can't be heartbroken with someone that you haven't had sex with, but trust me, the level is different. It's very different. Because eventually, if you've not had sex with a person, you know, you whatever, they've gone. But when you've had sex with them, oh God. It's almost like it's hard to let the person go. Some people may say that it's not the same for them. Great for you. But there's a lot of people that that's not the case for. Are you ready to potentially get pregnant for this man that you're in bed with? Are you ready for that? Is he that great of a guy? Will he be there when the baby comes? Will he look after you whilst you're pregnant? How will you feel knowing that, you know, this person that you're sleeping with could be the father of your child or the mother of your child? It's just, there's a lot to think about, you know? You might say that you're happy with it, then great. That's fantastic. Then marry the person. If you don't mind, what's stopping you from marrying them? Making that commitment in front of God and everybody else. It can be addictive. Sex can be addictive. Um, if you speak to sex counselors or sex therapists, I'm sure they'll tell you that it only just started. All it, all it needed was a one time. The one time, just to do it the one time. And it felt good. It gave you a rush and you just want to keep doing it. Sex can be addictive in different forms, whether it's, you know, watching pornography, whether it's, and sometimes it can even lead to pornography, <sighs> masturbation, all these kind of things that, you know, have become normalized that can be very detrimental. There is a benefit to being with, being married and having sex in marriage and learning each other in the bedroom, learning and respecting each other in the bedroom and growing together sexually. And also understanding yourself sexually, what you like, what you don't like. There is a lot to be said for a healthy sexual relationship in marriage. There's a lot, to, it's necessary. And I know that some people don't like to talk about it. They don't, or some people are not used to it. But the reality is that um, you can have a healthy marriage and, and a healthy sexual relationship within the confines of marriage. Outside of marriage, I can't speak on that. But I will tell you that it's not as good as when it's in marriage. No shade, no tea. And it will never be. It will never be. That's just my, that's my revelation. That's my understanding. Whether it's yours, please feel free to share. But we'll be respectful. We'll be respectful. I'm respecting those that have different views to mine. And I'm happy to, for anyone to have that has different views to share their views. But my stance remains the same. Because again, it's from the Bible. It's from the word. It's from the word of God. I didn't write it. God is a true and living God. And he cannot deny himself. If he says that this is not good, he knows why and I'm going to trust him on that yeah and I'm going to share that with you guys to protect you and protect your soul because this this life is not just our own when we're not just going to be and there's there's more than this earth right so anything that's going to steer us from the goal which is God and which is heaven I'm going to, I'm going to let us I'm going to remind us to wake up and stay focused
Get out of that guy's bed. Get out of that girl's bed. Don't do it. Don't let these people on Instagram fool you. Most of them are not even happy. <laughs> but I'm not gonna go there. I'm not gonna go there. I'm just, you know, protect your self, protect your soul and wait. Wait on the Lord for the one he has sent you for. Wait on the Lord for the one he has sent for you. Yeah? Let's do that. We're gonna do that together. Abstinence is cool. If you've had sex before and you're now abstinent, that's amazing. And I pray that God continues to strengthen you and that you keep going because he will, it will be fruitful. You will be fruitful. And if you've never had sex and you're a virgin, good, fantastic. Wait on the Lord again. Wait on the Lord and trust him. He will fulfill your desires, the, your deepest desires. God knows your deepest desires all, every one of them. Don't let no one fool you and say that, oh, how can you be a virgin at this age? This one that you're missing this, you're not missing anything. Tell them that you're waiting on God and he's gonna give you the very best. In fact, he's already giving you the very best. You're just waiting to see the physical manifestation of his promise and that's that. That's that, yeah? We good? I love you guys and I, I appreciate you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and let's keep the conversation going in the comments and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!